so we don't have so much time. Uh, I know how long you were talking yesterday. I probably you can shorten it a little bit. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, we already had a 25 minutes delay. It would be nice if you were expecting some questions. Shorten it to 20 minutes, if possible. So go ahead. I don't know if it's possible. We'll try. <laughs> no, 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 sure, sure, sure. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, first of all, I would apologize to those who uh, listened to me yesterday, because they were going to hear more or less the same thing. But then they will know very well what I'm talking about. And uh, hello to all the others who have joined us. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to talk to you today as if you were rectors. Well, this is your lucky day. <laughs> You're all rectors or presidents or whatever, or vice chancellors of universities. Then why do I do that? Be because I think that today I have an audience where most people uh, are convinced about open access. And if you are here and if you want to listen to what I'm going to say, it's because you would want to have good arguments, good examples, and uh, I would uh, like to tell you uh, what I consider a success story. It is what is, uh, has happened and is happening in Liège. Uh, I should say that uh, the, the exact same thing with the exact same system is also in, in application here in Minho, and uh, we are probably the two uh, most advanced uh, universities in Europe in that respect, uh, uh, as, as, as entire universities uh, being deeply involved in uh, open, an open access policy. So our open access policy is a uh, mandate, and I will try to explain to you that it is not just as simple as saying it is a mandate. When you have a mandate, you must enforce it. And this is the difficult part. And since I'm talking to you rectors, I'm going to try to explain what you have to do when you go back home to uh, make sure that things uh, work properly. So first of all, uh, why would we want to have a policy? Uh, when you are a rector, what, why would you want to, to enforce a policy of open access? First, because you are the head of an enterprise and no heads of enterprise ignore what they are making. And in universities, we are making students with diplomas, and we are making papers and books and, and, and uh, scientific production. If you do not know what is the scientific production of your university, then you have a problem. And I should tell you, most universities, if not all, do not know what their production is. They know a little bit of it, but not the whole thing. If you have a repository where the production is, then you can have an access to it and you can make statistics on that and you know exactly what's going on in your university and it's your job. Okay, N then um, you must also help your researchers to become famous, to be known, to be read. And if they are writing papers, sometimes I wonder why the scientists write papers. I think they write papers so that they can put the title in a list that they can submit for their promotions. Uh, and sometimes you wonder why are they forgetting why they are actually trying to communicate. And so the problem is communicating. And when, uh, and when I see a scientist who tells me I have a paper in a very prestigious journal in my field, and of course it's not accessible except for those universities who have enough money to get it, but I am satisfied because I can claim that I have published in a very prestigious journal, then he or she is totally missing the point. The point is that when you produce a scientific production, you want everybody to see it and everybody to read it, understand it, and reuse it. That's the point. And so this is what we're trying to tell our uh, researchers. You should be read more. You should 
have visits to your, to your paper, downloads if possible, and of course citations. So this is really the important matter. And the third reason why your rector would want to have this uh, is to reduce cost. But I must tell you that that so far doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Simply because all universities on the planet do not do the same thing that we do here in Mignot and in Liège. If everybody did the same thing, all the literature would be accessible on internet easily and by, by keywords and by any means that uh, you would uh, want to, to harvest that, but then it would be available. So today it is not available and universities like ours still have to buy subscriptions and still have to face the incredible increase in prices of subscription. So we are in a very, very bad situation and, and this is why I'm here and this is why I'm so outspoken on this subject because it is not enough that Mignot and Liège do this and a few others. Everybody must do it or else we're, we're, we, we, we stay in the same situation as, as before. So this is really very important for in, in my opinion. Now, what are the basics? Uh, well, first things that you, you, sh you have to know that if you uh, as rectors are, are having a, a repository and a mandate, nothing happens, okay? Nothing happens. There are a few guys who are going to put their papers and you reach 10% of your production in your repository. That's all that's going to happen. So you must make sure that you have an official institutional policy. It must be top down because the rector must say, you must do it. This is absolutely necessary. And now how the rector says that is, can vary. You can be a, a very strong rector saying, you have to do it. And you can take it another way and say, look how nice it would be if you did that, see? So you always have to manipulate the stick and the carrot in such a way that people understand that you are not just a nasty person, but that you are willing to help them, okay? Uh, and then, uh, of course, the bottom-up reaction comes. So, an empty repository is useless. You're spending money for nothing, okay? If you partly fill it, well, it's partly useless, okay? Uh, so you really have to make sure that it is full. Enforcement or inefficacy. That's an absolute rule in every case we have looked at. And uh, the trouble is that you can f not force academics or scientists to do things that they don't want to do. So you, you must be very, very convincing. And it takes a lot of energy from the rectors and from the authorities of the universities, administrative boards, whatever, uh, uh, or else uh, it will remain, you know, partly filled. And, and inefficient. And so the whole principle is based on having full repositories. The trick is to avoid saying that, that you have to, okay? So I don't say that uh, my, to, to my people that they have to. Uh, I'm just, this is the stick, okay? Uh, so all I'm saying is if you have publications, and you, these publications are not in the repository, I don't know that you have publications. If you're asking for a credit, if you're asking for a subsidy, if you're asking for uh, a promotion, if you're asking for having an assistant, uh, for having a technician, if, you are, if you're asking me anything, I look at your CV. I throw in the wastebasket the, the list of publications that you gave me. 
I, I draw it from the repository. Okay? And I see that you have or you don't have publications. And I even can go into your publications and look at the full text and look at what you're saying. I can look, I, I can get an immediate information whether you're being cited by colleagues uh, all over the world or not. If it seems that your work is useful or not. So, and I can ask, of course, uh, I can ask experts to look at your, at your publications and I can find out if it's worth giving you what you're being asking. Very simple. So it, you're not obliged to do anything. Just remember that you don't get a penny if you, if you don't do it. That's, that's all. Very simple. Uh, <laughs> it works. And so and you, you see that it works. This is, this is what's, what's happened since uh, this is November. Uh, 2008, when we decided that it it was you know, the rule, uh, and so you can see the increase, and it's funny because the, here you have a you have a little bump here, and then you have another one here. So you see, this is May 2010. This is May 2012. That's the period for for, for promotions. So people put hurry up to put in their papers before the promotion. So so the, the trick works. And uh, you can see that now uh, we, we are um, above 80,000 uh, documents in the repository, which is a success because uh, it's, it's much more than we thought we had. So, and I'm, I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, the important thing for, for a rector, what must we do? We, we need to have a mandate, or if we don't call it obligatory, you have understood that we have a means, we have the stick to make sure that people do it. And then, of course, there are a few people who are uh, re refractory to that. It's those people who do not have any promotion to ask, and who manage to get their money elsewhere, and who don't care about what I think. But in general, they like to have young people with them who are in, in the line and who, who will need a CV and who will need promotions and who will... So for their staff, their concern, even if they, they are at the top of their career and they don't worry about anything anymore. And what happens after a while is that even those people realize that their work is much more exposed this way because it's fully accessible on the web and then they receive uh, information from all over the planet that people are actually reading their papers and they love it, of course. So the bottom-up approach comes just after when people realize how, how nice it is. Okay, so you have to communicate all the time. I, I do that all the time. I, Communicate, communicate, communicate inside the, 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 the institution. I gave a name to the repository. It's called Orbi. Everybody knows Orbi. It's like, it, it's like a pet dog. Everybody knows and everybody talks about Orbi. How is your Orbi today? And so on, so on, so on. And so people love that, okay? And it has become a familiar thing in the university. So, but I keep communicating all the time. So I'm here today, everybody at home knows I'm here. I've sent pictures uh, by Twitter saying that I'm here, and there are a lot of other people here who are going in the same direction. So this is reinforcing all the time the concept. Be coherent, so don't make exceptions. Never make exceptions. The rule is the rule for everybody, even prestigious scientists and you reduce constraints as much as you can. Okay, um, speed up now a little bit. Uh, so there's not only a stick, but there are carrots. And the carrots are, of course, the visibility, the long-term preservation that we can guarantee, added value services. There are a number of services that are available for uh, the researchers and that they, they, they can use, they can enjoy, they have statistics, they have all kinds of things that they like. Uh, and then, um, you, you, you must help them. Uh, you, you must make things as user-friendly as possible. Because if they are repulsed 
by, by Orbi, then they don't like it. If it's easy to get into there and get the information, put your papers, then they, they love it. And, and of course, it's normal. So we provide the help, including an interactive hotline, which uh, responding, is responding within 24 hours, even weekends. So, because people put their papers in during the weekend, actually. M mostly, we have, to, we have a peak. And w I talked about communication. You see, this is, my, this is me. <laughs> it just so happens that uh, we, we, have ar uh, we have articles and we have information, we have communications on the website and uh, we are giving information of what's going on in, in open access, what's going on with the, the literature, what's happening with, with, with uh, University of Liège papers, how, how, does it, how does it go? And uh, see, you, you, we've, we've passed the 90,000 uh, references, of which 55,000 are in full text, which is a record of its kind. Uh, very in th this is very important, and this is, it's due to the <laughs> fact that you cannot put in a paper without the full text uh, if it has been published since 2002. Before that, you can put just a title if you like or metadata, but, but um, since 2002, you, it has to be a full text, okay? Or else the machine is, is rejecting it. And so, uh, it, it helps also that this automatic system of re rejection is, is of course very helpful. And you get all kinds of information and services available at any time. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun once you're, you're um, into that. And you can see then that the visibility is increasing <laughs> in a spec spectacular way in terms of uh, this, these are visualizations, uh, these are the, uh, the downloadings, uh, and you can also get this information for your own papers or for your, your, your whole production or for your department or for your faculty, whatever you'd like. The machine is programmed to do that, so it's very easy. Now, uh, of course, we have 100% full text from 2002 to 2012, now 13, uh, in terms of articles because that's what is mandatory. Okay, we have a less, of course, for others, uh, for books and uh, other kind of production, where we, we do not make it mandatory to have 100% full text. But we still have 50%, which is not bad at all. And we still, ha this is the most surprising, it's before 2002, and even as far back as the 19th century, uh, we, we have 40% of full text. That means that people are putting in all the articles in there because they think it's interesting and they're putting the full, uh, the full text in there. So this is really uh, an interesting result showing that actually the, uh, the source has been successful. It is, it, it's working. Uh, now, this is what the, the, the website looks like if you're looking at your own production uh, then you, and you have your papers, uh, you, the, the, the situation of the paper, what you can do to, to finish uh, the, the posting. Uh, and here, this is, uh, uh, this is an information, this is the way you can actually pull out uh, the your own production. You, 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 may, have, you may print out uh, the, your entire list of publication and Orbi is making the, 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 the selection of what is peer reviewed, not peer reviewed. According to the, the journal, it is all automatically cl classified in, in one area or another. So people cannot cheat and they cannot uh, send you a small communication as if it was a publication in an international journal, things like that. And this is an example. Uh, happens to be me, but that's all. Uh, and then you have, uh, th th this is a help to, to, to read it. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the end. Uh, th those are my thesis and, and stuff like that. And then uh, later on, then you, you find the, the papers, whether they are accessible or not accessible, uh, because in the repository, not everything is accessible. Everything is in it, but it's not necessarily available on the web. 
just like that. And so uh, there, are, there are many uh, categories, and this is the L, and you have a, a, a bibliometric uh, synthesis of the report that gives you all information on your own production. Very convenient. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the steepness of the curves is getting better and better, which means, in fact, two things. The first thing is this is what we knew as the production of uni the university, a little less than 4,000, but we are, in fact, close to 8,000, so we in actually published twice more than we thought. So this is how we know how, how much we're producing. And you see that each year the curve is steeper, which means that people are, are more and more involved, of course. Uh, it's mostly articles, mostly, uh, well, other things. Uh, now, 86% uh, of, the art, uh, of the articles are, oops, sorry, are peer-reviewed. 83% uh, of communications are peer-reviewed, which is, which is good. <coughs> it shows that people put in things that are actually of good value in terms of peer-reviewing. And then, okay, I'm, uh, I'm up with my time. Uh, and uh, this is the amount of documents. Uh, so it's more than half of the, the documents of all types that are peer reviewed. Okay, uh, we have millions of downloads. Uh, this is, uh, uh, there, there are tricks so that you can get the papers that are not accessible. You just ask for a reprint. And uh, okay, people are, are getting better and better in the way that they are playing with the system. Uh, I will, uh, of course, forget about this. It just shows that um, you, you, you'll be much more <laughs> downloaded if uh, it's in open access than in, in restricted access, of course. And uh, this has success everywhere else. And now we're working with the FNRS, which is the funder in Belgium, to, which is harmonizing its policy uh, on ours. So the other universities in Belgium are doing the same now. And so Belgium will be the first country which will be completely open access in terms of scientific production universities uh, starting uh, in uh, 2014. Thank you very much for your patience and... Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. You made it about 10 minutes shorter than you did it yesterday and uh, I know it's a uh, almost impossible to uh, have a, a break of university under, under time pressure. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but this, uh, we, uh, we already had some delay, delay but uh, I think we should allow, again, one or two questions. Um, I think there are many questions uh, according to this very exciting talk. They give us a lot of uh, tricks how to convince uh, our scientists uh, to publish open access. I think uh, above uh, there, yeah, you, you have the mic, and then Mr. Lotto again. Hello, I'm uh, Johan Schitten from the University of Kelly. And, and, and the mic doesn't work. It's not on. Oh, you can speak very okay. loud. Johannes Kessanemi, yeah, okay. from the University of Helsinki. Uh, I was wondering what kind of access do you allow for the restricted items? Uh, so do you have to, to uh, request it or do you have to just look in or what, how do you allow no. downloads for those? Uh, for for restricted, uh, restricted access, it's very clear on the, on the list of things that you actually get. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just show you rapidly. Sorry about this, I have to skip back. I skipped a little bit. Uh, so th this is what happens when you have uh, 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 restricted access. See, you, then then you, you just click on the article and it says, sorry, we can't, we, we can, it's not available on the web, okay? But you can get a reprint. And so you have to fill this form. You receive this form, you fill this form, and you say, this is the paper, uh, it comes automatically because you, you clicked it, and then all you have to do is put your uh, last name, first name, email, and affiliation, and the reason why you want to have this, and this is, and there are, of course, uh, a number of uh, things that are being said here that say that it, you cannot use it uh, for commercial purposes and so on and so on. And then you send it here. The author receives it. It's the author who receives it. And the author can say yes or no by a single click. If he says yes, off it goes to your email. 
and you get a print, a reprint. As we did by surface mail for the last century. So it's exactly the same. So that's a general philosophy to make it as easy as possible, right? So Mr. Lazar, you have a, yeah. Mr. Lazar, and then you maybe pre 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 give the microphone to him. Yeah, so it, it, it's always preprints, okay? It, it's, all, it's, all, it's always as close as possible to the final uh, typeset document, but it's not the, the, it is not the publisher's document unless, sorry, uh, unless it's, uh, unless the publisher allows it, of yeah. course, and, so. and not, not all publishers allow it, but they are wrong. So does e they does should accept it because it's a good publicity for them. So every, every item has a preprint version available or just some of them? Uh, I didn't get the... the, the so yeah. does uh, every... I mean, we don't want any interaction. I mean, um, probably we have so much time. There are two more yeah. questions, please. <laughs> uh, please, short questions and short answers, yeah. please. We'll talk at the coffee Yeah, time. yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jeffrey Bolton from University of Edinburgh and the Royal Society. I, I no doubt uh, that a fundamental issue in all this is what responsibility do institutions have for the knowledge they create? Yeah. And it's clear that having an open institutional repository can be a very helpful part of that, certainly not all of it. But I think you make a, I would say you make a fundamental logical error. That is your statement that the institution, the university, is the fundamental unit of production. It's not. Fundamental unit of production is the scientific community, communities to which your historians, your physicists, your mathematicians belong. And so what I would have liked to have heard is how what you are doing in Liège relates to what really needs to happen internationally yeah. to make access to data and to information internationally available and very readily. Yeah. But th that, that's what we're doing. In fact, we, we're, we're doing a little part. We're trying to have 100% of our researchers to be exposed on the web. And the web is not University of Lier. The web is World Wide Web, OK? So all we want is bring what you have and is precious and hidden. We want to bring it at the surface so everybody can see it. Everybody, ev everywhere. And if every university did the same thing, everything would be available on the web, 100%. And that's what scientists have to put in their heads. They must realize this. And you can go through, uh, let's say, all the historians together, or all the biologists together. OK, this is fine. But how do you enforce the fact that everything is up there available? You, you must have a trick to do it. And, and the closest situation between this decision and the scientist is in a university, because that's, that's, that's a closed and closed place where the relationship is direct and where you can have the stick. Because the carrots are nice, but they don't work without the stick. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, probably there are many more questions. Uh, I think, Mr. Lazar, it's... Uh, the last speaker does not need to suffer. I think we should close, <laughs> close it right now. We have done any more time for more questions. But Mr. Lantier, I think you will be available here for the rest of the day. And probably uh, you can I'm close. leaving at, at 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock. So take your time and the, the chance to learn from this trip is very important. But let me please introduce our last uh, speaker, because otherwise our time schedule runs really out of order. And uh, I don't need so many